welcome to another episode of Femtech in Asia, where I offer you a glimpse into the world of Femtech and sexual wellness in Asia by speaking with businesses and personalities in the space. Today we have with us Sabrina, one third of awesome. the Hedonist Store Trio. Hi, Sabrina. Hello, How are hello you? everyone. Hi, Karen. I'm great. Thank you. Where from one you lockdown to another, from? huh? Where are you calling us I'm from? I'm in London. I'm in London at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm still in lockdown, but um, the, the days are getting longer, so it's getting brighter as well. So I'm sure um, we're all looking forward to ah, spring. <laughs> spring is coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and lockdown's but, lifting soon, so we have about two weeks to go. So. Oh, 14 more days. You can do it. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about um, the head in a store, a bit about you guys. I know that there are three of you. You're representing the, the other two ladies today. How did it all start? When and why? Absolutely. So the head in a store uh, launched two years ago, almost to the exact day. So we're celebrating our second year anniversary um, next week, actually, April. Oh, congratulations. Um, and... Uh, thank you. We're really excited <laughs> about it. We've got lots of things um, happening for them the month of April. But um, yeah, we started, I mean, it originated in Singapore. So we're a Singapore-based company, uh, pleasure-centric, uh, sex-positive. That's been said a lot lately. But uh, we are a sex-positive um, platform, online platform, where we really focus on destigmatizing the taboos around sex and pleasure. And um, we do this through uh, different channels. So one, we have um, toys, so pleasure tools, um, fetish items, lingerie, um, and that's one way um, our e-commerce platform, um, but we also have experiential events and workshops, another educative um, online platform where we try and reach out and uh, create this refreshing uh, take on sexual wellness and also um, in an unashamed, very trusting environment. So trying to build that community of um, empowered women, also another word that's been very overused lately, <laughs> International <laughs> Women's Day, but we, it's, it's um, never more, too much. more than, <laughs> exactly, more than that, it's about inclusivity, right, um, for all, and building that um, community or sisterhood, I would say, of, of women that want to own their pleasure, so how, that's pretty much it. How has that been, building that community in Singapore, because I keep hearing that Singapore's, Singaporeans are so conservative. You know, what, what's, your, what's your take on it? You know, it's interesting. Initially, we were definitely approached with a bit of um, resistance. Um, I think I would um, deduce that to uh, being shy. But once we offered that platform and an outlet um, to talking about it, I think people, um, especially the youngsters now, they really are finding that they're so curious about this topic. Um, we also did an event actually that was um, a pop-up academy. And just to give you an ex a bit of insight on how people approached us initially, um, um, they were they shied away from it. And even couples, we would see boyfriends or guys shying their girlfriends away from it because, or veering them away from the, the booth <laughs> because they said, you know, we, I've got the real deal. We don't really <laughs> need toys to like replace us. But um, but with time, and I think because of curiosity, that kind of um, that has helped us get yeah, open up a lot of um, women and men and couples to really embracing um, the positivity and the conversation around around sex and pleasure. Yeah. What was what was your experience like with sex and pleasure growing up? Is it something that you brought into the business as well? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that initially my um, the narrative around sex and pleasure was not very open, uh, but given I grew up in Singapore and especially it was in the 80s. So um, especially with yeah. my parents as well, <laughs> arriving in 82, we didn't really um, talk about, <laughs> about sex. Um, I remember my father, he first joked about the first condom, condomania, um, that store that opened. And it was always seen as a more um the uh, plaza as a gift one? for somebody else yes i think so <laughs> that was there was one lucky plaza as well I mean, it, was, so, one, it, was, um, it was that stretch of of Rome. yeah exactly <laughs> exactly um the one you didn't speak about right so yeah, whenever you went in it was always more about um 
about gifting someone um, as a joke, right? So yeah. grabbing, grabbing, um, grabbing, it was always for someone else and never really yeah. for yourself. <laughs> so, um, so it was definitely something that you felt a little bit ashamed about that, you know, it felt sleazy and it felt a little bit dirty, let's be honest, to be, you know, to, uh, to walk into these stores and um, perhaps even a sense of shame um, because it was, you would see all these, you know, phallic symbols everywhere and, um, and yeah, dildos just all over the place, like yeah. <laughs> hanging off the shelves. Yeah. And, you know, it was, it was only, um, yeah, recently, obviously, that now we've, we're trying to destigmatize Sorry. and normalize the topic. House of Condoms, I think it was called. Yes. <laughs> you got it. You got it right. That's it. That's a, that's a, that's a serious throwback. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I would say my personal relationship towards um, sex was always also to provide and to please. Like if we're if we're talking about something a bit more personal and 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 real, right, and raw, and it was it was more to provide and to please than to own and to lead mm -hmm. in the bedroom, right? And I feel that women are also, or even men, are also made to look or feel a little bit overly emotional or even um, exaggerated, right? If they ask for something or if they have a certain want or need in the bedroom around, um, around their own desires or pleasures. So, you know, I was definitely made to feel a little bit fragile. And it's funny because we always say foreplay is the main play, right? Like 95% um, of people who masturbate regularly actually climax regularly. So, you know, practice makes perfect. I guess that's also one of the <laughs> like things. Like everything that, else. Um, exactly. And yeah, and so, and also a bit of um, statistics. So research shows that straight women have the, have the fewest or least orgasms and while straight men have the most. The most. Right? So, yeah. So finding my way to, to pleasure and sex was very much in 2016 when I just started my journey on yoga and, and meditation and breath work, which also really helps during sex or even in couples play to reach that, that climax. Um, and I think um, even I can speak for the other two girls as well. Um, Jacqueline, she's Singaporean. So obviously also in a very confined space growing up with little to no conversation yeah, around it. And I relate. <laughs> and, uh, everyone can relate to that um and um however jade um she's french and she grew up i mean talking about masturbation um open conversations around um yeah about around pleasure and around even um female genitalia like just having that conversation with her parents mom and dad so yeah, and kudos to her yeah i mean to having that conversation early on and I, th I think uh, because, I mean, just for anyone who's watching, listening, we we're in a clubhouse room together and Jade mentioned this too. And mm -hmm, she also mm -hmm. said that for her, that was actually a really healthy environment. Contrary to what people might think that, you know, if you talk too much to kids about sex, like they want to try it earlier, but the opposite happens. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Right. So um, it's like strict parents. Once you're out of the, out of the nest, you go crazy. Right. If, um we realize as well that we're just really trying to bring that that pleasure gap together right to reduce mm. that because um we didn't really speak about it and and women didn't feel like they needed to have an orgasm or or feel pleasure to complete the act of sex right so it's almost usually when the guy comes it's done then then it's complete <laughs> well right? you're done yeah you're done <laughs> Exactly. Also, I think a so, lot of popular media is always like, okay, how how do you please your men? Like five sex positions positions men love. Like it's always kind of one sided. Yeah, quite like male dominated. And also, you know, I feel that um, we're having more of that now. But sex, or at least good sex, requires really great communication, right? And us to talk about it. So you can have all the mechanics down. Um, but if you can't communicate with your partner and be vulnerable about what you like, the chances of you really, you know, fulfilling your wildest dreams or desires is is slim to none, right? So I think 
yeah, this this hold us back from pleasure, and this is exactly the the reason I think we are we came into this business. So, yeah. And you started two years ago.、Mm-hmm. Had, how was was it really challenging initially? Like, did you immediately tell your family, your friends that you guys are setting this up? What did they say? <laughs> This is a good one.、Um, yeah, so family and friends. I think、um, we didn't really face backlash in that sense. However, we did.、Um, it, there was an initial shock,、um, but there was eventually more support than shock when they understood、mm-hmm. our vision and our mission、um, for doing this、um, and the reason for it. I mean, we know it's still. I would say. Um, a challenging conversation to have and to normalize the topic as such, but、um, you know, in Asia there was still a lot of censorship around、um, the word and around advertising. And whenever we did outdoor events, we tried to.、Um, it's tough. Like we tried to bring you know the topic closer to people. At the same time. There's this stigma. There's just still the stigma attached to it, and we never knew were there.、Um, you know, depending on were there were there children around, we had to be very, very, you know, weary and respectful and and very careful with the way we like hosted events. And、yeah. we always created it in a safe space so that we could, you know, with a curtain so that we could show and tell behind the curtains. <laughs> And、um, bring out the toys. For example, dem- <laughs> demo or toys exactly. And、um, I think, yeah, it was it. We we could see a lot of. I, I guess our friends and our families were were quite in- encouraging、um, once they found out about why we tried to do this because we realized that when we did group events and experiences, women would.、Um, Eventually, it would take them a while to warm up, but once we broke the ice, they would open up and talk about their own experiences. And、um, when women come together, it's great, right? Because it really,、yeah. like, <laughs> it really opens everyone up, and、you、people feel so、out. yeah, all their emotions like pent up, like yeah, yeah, things,、uh, experiences. But what we realized is they then, by expressing themselves, they felt so liberated. And you know,、um, and and this liberation then also gave them a chance to kind of maybe try and test our our product and also openly speak about it because that's what makes you empowered then to then yeah become come into your confidence or come into your you know body positivity. There's there's so many other mental emotional like blockages right that kind of are are removed or released.、Um, so I think that's quite interesting as well to. To note, like a lot of our friends may have supported us, but may also personally not be into it、mm-hmm. at first. But then, because as we as we become adults, as we become older, we are a bit more withdrawn to sharing our experiences, and also there's that fear of judgment. There's that respect to your partner. You don't want to divulge too much information. There's a lot going on, right? And、um, and. But we realized that, yeah, I think the the biggest the biggest hurdle to overcome is 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 to get them in a room and to really speak to them, offer them a trusted space and platform where they don't feel、um, ashamed and they feel that they can share with other others who are feeling the same way.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. How、mm-hmm. how have you guys been doing the outreach since the circuit breaker, since the lockdowns?、Mm-hmm. You know how has that changed? So I think that、um, lockdown or COVID has the only one positive thing about COVID. I would say is that it helped us with、um, sales. We had a huge spike,、um, almost three hundred percent in、uh, at the at the beginning of lockdown, and we had people almost panic buying, <laughs> which was. <laughs> Excellent.、Um, <laughs> make sure they get their COVID kit,、um, you know, their pleasure kit,、um, when they're stuck or when they're caught alone at home. But、um, I think that it's really, it's really opened our eyes. I mean, we're really shifting into a digital world now, and、um, especially post COVID, we have been looking into,、um, you know, expanding our offering、um, with you know, Zoom sessions. We've tried to do. Um, a lot of online like talks, workshops. We have a blog that we always get 
We featured writers to contribute to different topics. We have um, all the social media. We're trying to cover most of the social media <laughs> channels to that because we know that's the future. Yeah. And um, that's really where people go I mean, to get news on anything, right? Absolutely. And I mean, you've seen we we did a, a clubhouse session together as well. The the I think podcasts, clubhouse sessions, like you mentioned, um, a lot of these just access to I think accessibility is 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 the biggest yeah. um challenge for us now. So we want people to be able to attend our events, whether it's online or in person. Um, we've got a lot of events in Singapore um, and coming up in the next few weeks and months. So that's exciting for whoever, you know, is there and able to attend. Otherwise, we are also trying to cater to the rest of um, the world um, in, in offering it online. I mean, as essentially, we're trying to expand regionally and globally. So we'll have to offer it online anyway. So that's something we're looking into. Um, but the censorship around around this in this business is still very very strict and it's uh, so jarring is, is it really it's, so it's yeah it's hindrance for sure yeah. um that's one thing that's probably been a bit easier in london <laughs> well you're in kind of if there ever was a hub for femtech you're it's there i feel absolutely Health absolutely tech, um i can see it yeah it's definitely growing it's the most exciting industry right now i would say yeah yeah so you're you're in the thick of it <laughs> <laughs> actually coming back to the events i'm really curious what goes on mm. in the yin yoga class and also what is a breath work class like because I, mm. I hear breath okay. work a lot but i don't really understand it okay so what we did was um in the yin y yoni yin yoga, we started with um, the Kegel balls that we sell, and we decided that um, we would like to kind of offer, you know, an experience around it to really strengthen the pelvic floor muscle um, for, you know, um, anybody who is going through incontinence or postnatal or um, just even to increase your pleasure and orgasms by tightening and strengthening that muscle. Um, so what happens is with um, how I usually structure, because I'm also a yoga teacher. So um, we began in Singapore um, when I was still living there. And what we would do is we would start first with um, yin practices, right? So yin is a little bit more, uh, um, you hold the poses for longer. It's a bit more relaxed. It's, um, I would say, the more, sl the slower part of the, the, the class. And then the yang poses are a little bit more strengthening and a little bit more holding and pulsate, pulsating. So um, what we would do is we would try and do create um, a sequence of poses that will really um, work your um, abdominals, but also work your hips and then work that Kegel muscle, right? And with the Kegel balls inserted in your yoni. <laughs> and, and yoni is also the Sanskrit word for vagina. So that's how we use that. And so bit what happens is we'll use a lot of music. We'll use a lot of um, yoga poses, that yoga inspired poses to create this class. And what we've also realized that, that we use a lot of breath work um, and there's so many different types of breath work, right? That can either heighten your senses, that can um, invigorate your, your emotions. And also there are also um, breath, there's also breathing techniques that will relax your mind and relax you um, overall. So I did a breath work um, course as well. And we learned different types of um, breath work to visualize and also to, um, to invigorate and kind of even to heighten your senses. And sometimes you can get quite, you can get tingles in different spaces. You can start visualizing certain things um, whilst you're, whilst you're, you know, focusing on your breath work with your eyes closed. So that's a very different way of, of us maybe moving, I think, transitioning into um, maybe tantric wellness as well, mm -hmm. um, which will be something that we're, we're, we're always going to in integrate into our you know, entire wellness offering. Um, so yeah, that's something that I think has, has become quite important with all the meditation apps 
and yeah. you know the mental wellness kind of tying in with yeah. physical wellness and it's sexual really, wellness it's really getting its day in the sun now <laughs> absolutely such yeah. a hot topic right now as well mm. <laughs> do you um I mean obviously you guys have done a lot of events how workshops whether they're big or small you know have done a lot of mm. pop-ups are there any stories from customers that you particularly remember that oh, yes. changed their life or something yes so we had um, a very interesting perspective male perspective during our orgasm talk, um, we had a, um, a sex psychologist or a sexologist mm -hmm. who also um, gave the talk. And um, at the end of it, the, the question was around whether or not if you keep your lube on the bedside table, was that a yay or a nay for women? Um, and does it send mixed messages? Is it it, does it show or portray that you are well informed, that you're prepared? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so it was definitely, it was definitely a, a huge insight and quite vulnerable, I think, of the of the guy to come forward and and share that with us, um, because you could get it's super subjective and you could get mixed messages um, or mixed reviews or reactions as well from the from your partner right when if we display them in the open another um a, a lot of a lot of responses we've re we've received from women are that um they're in their mid-30s and they've never experienced an orgasm yet and they're just keen to learn more about how they can do it in an unashamed way um without expressing too much or even without revealing um themselves Right, so it's almost coming up to us for advice and for some guidance on like what they should use. Um, also, we just recently had a blog on a sex toy virgin, so somebody who'd never tried um, a sex toy before and and popping her cherry <laughs> with one of our toys, and um, you know. This person was even it was is in a relationship. So um, sometimes it's not just about your own pleasure and yourself, but maybe popping that sex toy cherry with your partner. Um, yeah. So that was also quite an interesting like revelation that people are which still I, yeah exploring this. Which I think mm. is actually such a good um, communication tool, right? To if you've never used one before or if if you're going to use one to just bring up that conversation i think sometimes you just need a 100%. little help to be honest about what you like and what you don't like 100 percent. i feel that like even during, especially during lockdown when we're you know at home stuck with our partners yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i mean enjoying all that time <laughs> but yeah so I'm basically I. <laughs> you know <laughs> you know we have to plan date nights and create that spark and yeah. um bring it back and elevate your you know bedroom essentials or basically yeah. start creating yeah some some fun playtime that that you can enjoy and everyone's going through it you know and it's something that we should not feel embarrassed to talk about or bring up and and that's something that we've definitely realize there's more out there than we think yeah. um and the fact that you know what i mean yourself as well and and there's so many amazing players in this space now and we're all trying to really help and encourage right to yeah make the uh, the women happier and essentially the men happier the men, men <laughs> uh, and also the world <laughs> a better place <laughs> a happier place at least Exactly. Yeah, I find I find that I mean the the one thing I love about this industry is no matter who I speak to, whoever's in it, like mm -hmm. we're in it to just to give. Everyone is so giving, like we just mm -hmm. because it's really at this point is the more the merrier, right? The more conversation we create, yeah. the more people hear it, and then the more they start to talk about it, and then the more it becomes like a mainstream conversation, and there's nothing to hide about it. Absolutely. I mean, there was that, we always bring it back to that statistic of 91% of, of men um, experience orgasms during sex. And for women, it's 39. Yeah. So, 
Yeah. I mean, there has to be that, that we have to decrease or try and, you know, address it because, because, um, yeah, it definitely is something that we should, we should kind of close the gap. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. And I think the, the, the best thing about these women led companies is that the content will be made by women for women with women in mind. Absolutely. We're seeing so many more um like femtech and like female founders like leading this this space and leading this industry um there's so many brands and so much funding around around um yeah female led companies now which i think is really just reshaping the trajectory of the wellness industry and sure. uh yeah i've been following a lot of um yeah some really great significant like investments around around um, femtech so that's really interesting Mm. so bringing this into innovation i want to ask you something fun i don't know if you've thought about it but you guys see toys all the time right you have best-selling toys Mm -hmm. um like if you try them we test them (laughs) you try them you test them you know what works you know what doesn't work if you could build any toy you wanted like what Mm. would it be that's not out in the market. I don't know if you've ever played with that idea. Absolutely. So we have actually um, spoken to um, a few experts as, re- as well around around designing almost our like wish list toy. Um, so wellness and desire is deeply individual, right? Um, it's so subjective. Everyone has. Um, a different vagina everyone has a different desire um, and yeah. um, it changes depending on the partner as well depending on where you are you are at you know age um, phase of life all of these things and there's no one size fits all pun intended <laughs> but like also um we we definitely want to address the 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 custom market right so um customizable um toys and we also have our our yoni yoga, which we think is, it's our signature yoni yoga, um, which we want to explore with our own Kegel balls that are connected to um, an app, right? So we're moving into tech, into digital. Um, And yeah, we've spoken to a few uh, doctors, gynecologists, um, designers, um, app designers, and yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, you know, fingers crossed. Um, that will be one of our our yeah, future plans to um, roll out with something like that. We know oh, that we're, we've been following awesome. a lot of brands. Like, yeah, I hope so. We, oh, yeah. I mean, there's, there's so much room for it for growth there, and um, there and is um, there hasn't been something like that that's come out of Singapore. Not of Singapore. Yeah. So we do follow a few brands. Like we're big fans of, you know, LV and Mode and Dame. And and LV has a tracker. So they do um have Kegel a Kegel bowl. Um yeah. it's a bit more lengthy, but the way it looks is is you insert it and then there's an app that tracks like you do your exercise, right? It squeezes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And um, and they also do breast pumps, and I mean, they're yeah. they're amazing. They've, they've definitely tapped into that uh, market. I but think they've sort of opened the door can... for the, for funding into this industry. I think they were one of the first big totally. ones to be funded by VC. Um, yeah, I, exactly. I um I think that there's more there's more that can be done there, and if we can create also, yeah, we can basically expand it, and and we've got all kinds of ideas. But yeah, those are basically kind of the those are the main. The main uh, that's the direction that we want to go to, into i think um yeah there's a lot that can be done in, with with tech i mean you've got you've got um vr and 3d porn you know we have yeah. <laughs> we've been looking <laughs> we were looking at ces right the consumer electronics mm-hmm. um, um festival or expo and they had just i read that they had just um when they revoked the award for the innovation award um, they finally have given the um, extended the award to the to the female founder. Laura De Carlo. Um, yes, exactly. Yeah. For the um, innovation award, which I think is so interesting because we hope to be there one day. <laughs> I think they have just come up with one that 
warms up. Mm. I think their latest toy is one that warms. Yeah. Um, we actually have also, we also have a warming wand. So our wand also warms up. So depending on like the different speeds, they, they go up to 10 speeds actually and uh, uh, different pulsating variations, but um, it warms up after a while, which is quite nice. So <laughs> something, if you're into I that. It makes you, sense, right? Because it kind of like of yeah. emulates human touch as much as possible. Almost? Absolutely. That's exactly it. Yeah. Mm. So it feels a bit more like, you know, the real thing and you feel that like skin sense. Of being yeah. Like with, yeah I mean coming back to what you said in, in the touch. beginning that the guys are pulling their girlfriends or partners away from the booth but I mean actually nothing can or people don't even want to replace human touch skin to skin contact like nothing will replace that yeah, exactly you can't um, substitute these things no but the good thing is is if if they only try it, then you'll get closer to your actual yeah. desires and to know what tick, what what makes you tick. I think that's what's amazing because that can almost be a um, a platform to help you figure it out. Because some people yeah. just don't really know what yeah you know makes them. When you said that um, on the blog, you guys had a blog post by a sex toy virgin, so. Uh, the Dell HQ also has a secret reviewers club, and one of the mm. one of the diary entries we had, uh, which actually is going up tomorrow, uh, mm. she has never used a sex toy before either, um, and so she took the chance to share this with her partner, and mm -hmm. I think her first positive response was that it actually brought them closer because it mm. kind of allowed them to be intimate in a very soft but like confronting way because mm -hmm. you you have to say what you like or or not like uh, like there's no other way about it right mm. yeah. yeah it is uh, you put it in, in such a great way it's so confronting but in in a soft and trusted way right yeah like exactly in an intimate space exactly in mm. a comfortable safe space yeah um so mm. Coming back to something new, uh, you mentioned to mm. me that you guys had some new toys for April that you might want to share with us. <laughs> Absolutely. So we have, um, so our plans for 2021 are really to um, expand our range of toys. Mm -hmm. um, we're also bringing in um, lubes and condoms, which I think is really important because yes. um, we've seen also a lot of other brands and um, female brands where um, they're creating kits with lube and condoms so that it is more accessible for women to also carry them as opposed to always the stigma attached to men always having to hold or carry them by the condoms. Oh, it's hex. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's great. And the way they've branded it, it's fun. It's yeah. um you know again it's oh, it's i it's really not hope so you get to meet them in person they seem like such yeah. fun cool people yeah yeah i mean there's so many super cool um like new brands out there as well but we felt that you know this these are all accessories these are all add-ons these are all things that um people need on a daily basis why not make it accessible for yeah males and females and mm. um add it to our our assortment um, another thing is we have, yeah, we have some exciting toys coming. One is uh, a really fun, a really fun uh, <laughs> toy. I can't disclose it now, but I can't <laughs> stop laughing when I think about it. But stay tuned. It's almost like an April Fool's um, campaign <laughs> that we're going to be doing. We're launching next week, so you'll see it for the month of April. But um. We're also doing a giveaway with that toy, which is hilarious. Um, but also, <laughs> I mean, the butt plugs are coming in. We have another um, clit sucker, which is the external stimulation versus like internal penetration, because we realize right. that, you know, most women, right? Like with the, with our 8,000 nerve endings, <laughs> and, um, we, we really feel the, the more sensitive externally, mm -hmm. um, which is why we've tried to, um, yeah, focus on, on toys um, that can provide that. Um, and so there's another one coming in, which is going to be very interesting and really works very well. Um, 
So yeah, tried and tested. <laughs> As we say, we put our pussies to the test <laughs> and uh, make sure that you know everything Tough is um, quality, performance, top notch. <laughs> exactly. So we, um, that's all rolling out in April. Um, as well as events. So we've just, um, we've got some girls nights in, um, bachelorette nights, and we have some bookings, which are really exciting for, you know, women in their 30s, 40s, 50s, who want to just have a workshop on Sex Toys 101, um, whether it's a staycation at a hotel or in their homes. Um, we're doing these closed door I would say like sessions and, and groups in a circle um, which also feels very liberating and I think quite fun for women to to organize especially now during um, the new normal which is post-COVID yes. right I think this is really um, where we're at in the mm, next two three years for sure absolutely and I think I think um, one of the events that we did which was really exciting which we're also going to try and and bring back is um, the BDSM and the kink scene, right? It's definitely a smaller group, but um, we did an intro to kink um, and we worked with a BDSM group in Singapore. They also have day jobs. So when they came and, and spoke about um, this underworld of BDSM, they um, no photographs were allowed because they did want to respect that they have, you know, almost a, I yeah. would say a double life. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that they have People this interest to get the that wrong you know, impression about it. Absolutely. So there's so many different, yeah, interesting like events that we can we can focus on. But for now, we're definitely doing the um the girls' nights in and the bachelorette parties. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Ooh. I've come to the end of my questions. Um, is there anything else you'd like to okay. add? <laughs> um I Anything? mean I would just say we're really excited to to have spoken to you I love what um Della HQ is doing as well like you're Thank offering you. so much information and and education uh in your academy and also also you know offering insight into like other players in the space and I think you know as we like expand regionally and um globally and fundraise and you know keep on pushing I hope that we can, yeah, we can all kind of open and increase the conversations around this topic. So for sure. Yeah. So do I. I think we all have the same goal. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Sabrina, for joining us. You can search uh, the Dell HQ on YouTube and Spotify to listen to this episode, previous episodes, and new episodes to come. Thank you so much. Bye. Amazing. Thanks, Karen. Take care.